Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for teas. Starting from today, you and I are going to work together to get ourselves ready for the math portion of teas. We will solve all the math problems that you will find in this book here, the ATI Study Guide, version 7. 2025. That's the latest one, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we're working together. And we're just going to work through page by page. The story begins on page number 93. Let's take a look at it. On page number 93, as I said just a second ago, that's where the story begins. And the very first topic they cover, or uh, rather is topic, is uh, or are because there are three of them here percentage fractions and decimals they be given some problem uh, we have some problems here all together 10 of them and our job is to convert from percentage to fractions to, to decimals and back and forth let's look at the very first one very straightforward very simple we're given 35 percent like this and our job is to represent this thing in decimal and in fraction let's take a decimal first before we do any of that we have to ask ourselves what does this word actually mean, literally mean, percent? What does it literally mean? Well, it means literally exactly what it says. Percent means per 100 cent. That's why one penny is called a cent because it represents one hundredth of a dollar. That's, that's where the word century comes from. One hundred out of one hundred. Percent means out of one hundred or if you like over 100. For example, 35% simply means 35 over 100. Now, we have to represent it in decimal. Now it makes it much easier to figure out what the decimal part is. If you're dividing something by 100, whatever the number is, here it is 35 and the decimal, is, decimal exists here. Even though it does not show here, but there's a decimal here. There's a decimal here and there's a zero here. So let's put a zero here. And since we're dividing by 100, which has two zeros, we pick up our decimal and move it two places, one and two, and we're done. To represent 35% in decimal would simply be 0 0.35. The decimal moves up here, so it becomes 0 0.35, and then you have to put a leading zero. There we go, 0 0.0. That's 35% expressed as a decimal. Now let's do it as a fraction. Well, we have already done so right here. 35% means 35 out of 100, we have already done so, it is, it is being represented here in the form of fraction, but not quite. If it can be reduced, we have to reduce it, and this thing, this guy can be reduced, so let's reduce it. I'm just going to keep it simple, I'm going to write 35, instead of writing 100, I'm going to write it as 10 times 10. Now we can divide the top and bottom by 5. 35 is made up of 7 fives, because 7 fives are 35. And this 10 is made up of 2 5, so we have 2 times 10, which is 20, so it's 7 over 20. There we go. 35%, 35% when represented as a fraction, can be represented as 35 over 100, oh, and when reduced, it is simply 7 over 20. And if they ask you, what is the fractional form of 35%, in the answer choices, we will not see this, we will see this guy, because this is the reduced form. You have to reduce it. Let's do the next one. Twenty-eight point four. Twenty-eight point four percent. The same thing. Let's first do the decimal before we worry about the fraction, because the fraction is a little tricky here. But so was the last one because we have to reduce it. It is for the same reason that this one is going to be a little tricky. Let's do the decimal first. So again, 28.4% means 28.4 out of 100. And again, the decimal is right here. Because we are dividing by 100, it has two zeros. It has two zeros. We're going to pick up our decimal and move it two places. One and two. It's going to end up here in front of two. So this is what it ends up. Two, eight, and four. Two, eight, and four. And decimal moves here, and then you have to put a leading zero. Leading zero is put only for one purpose. Leading zero is always put there to make it easier on the eyes 
so the reader does not miss that there is a decimal here. That's the only reason. So that by mistake you don't end up reading as a 284 to draw your attention to the fact that it is not 284, it is 0.284, you put a leading zero. And yes, that is how that is how it is read. This quantity is read as anything that anything that comes after decimal. Anything that comes after decimal, each digit has to be read individually. You should not read this. It is not read as 0 0.284. That is not how one reads it. This is read as 0 0.284. Each digit is read individually. So that was the decimal form. Let's do the fraction form. Again, the fraction form is right here. It is simply 28.4 divided by 100 because it, it is 28.4%. First thing, our first job is to get rid of this decimal. And the way we get rid of it is by multiplying it by 10. If you were to multiply this quantity by 10, then the decimal point will move to the left, to, to the right one place and we'll get rid of it. Since we're multiplying top by 10, we must multiply the bottom by 10, obviously. And now it makes sense because 10 divided by 10 is one. Therefore, we have not done anything to this quantity because multiplying any quantity by one doesn't change the value. So now what we end up is, instead of 28.4, we end up with 284 over 100 times the 10, which is 1,000. But I'm going to continue writing it as 100 times 10, and you'll see it in a second why. Now we have to reduce it. Let's do it, shall we? I'm going to raise this part so we have a little bit of room here and it's not too crowded. Let's, let's reduce it. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. You can divide by 2 if you wanted to, if you, if you want to start with a baby step and divide top and bottom by 2. We could do that too. Let's do that. Let's divide by 2 just to make it easier. 284 over 100 times 10. Let's divide by 2 so that it makes it easier. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 is, in other words, 2 is made up of 1, 2. 8 is, eight is made up of 4, 2's. And 4 is made up of 2, 2's. And 100 divided by 2 would be give us 50. <coughs> and we go one more round dividing by 2. So instead of going two rounds each time dividing it by two, we could have done it in one step by dividing top and bottom by four. It's your choice. Let's divide by two again. 14 is made up of seven twos, and two is made up of one two, obviously. And 50 is made up of 25 twos. But don't forget we have a 10 here. So that's it, we're done. It is 71 over 25 times 10. Or can we do it? Let's do it right here so that we can continue. So it is 71 over 25 times 10, which is 250. And this is same as the percentage that was given to us, which was 28.4%. So in the exam, if there's a question where they give us ex expressed, where they say express 28.4% in the form of a fraction, that would consider, that this would be the correct answer. Not that the other one is not a correct answer. 28, 284 divided by 1000 is a correct answer, but it's not in the reduced form. And you're not going to find that as one of the answer choices. This quantity, 284 divided by 1000, is not something you're going to find in the answer choices. In the answer choices, what you'll find is this, because you have to reduce it. You understand? And again, you see 250 is one fourth of 1000. We could have divided top and bottom by four and be done with it in one shot. Let's divide it. 28 is made up of 7 4, 7 4 is a 24, and 4 is made up of 1 4. And 100, 100 divided by 4 is 25, and then we have a 0 here which comes down. That's all. Let's do next one, number 3. Number 3 says 55%. What can we do with 55%? Well, again, same thing. 55% percent. Percent means out of 100. 55 out of 100. And again, if you want to keep it simpler, don't write 100 as 100. Write 100 as 10 times 10, if you want to keep it simple. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 has 1 5, and this 5 has 1 5, and 10 has 2 5. There we go. We end up with on the top 11 over 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. So that is 55% when expressed as a fraction in its reduced form. 55% when expressed as a decimal would be simply be again 55 over 100 because it's 55%. The decimal sits here, right here. We're going to pick it up and move it two places. One, two, because there are two zeros. So it will be 0 
five five. That's it. So when we move it here, we have to put a leading zero. Leading this zero is something that we're putting in ourselves just for the sake of convenience, just to make it easier for us to see. That's the only purpose it serves, so that we don't miss this zero by itself, uh, so that we don't miss this decimal setting by itself. That's the number four. Number four is a bloody silly problem. I don't know why it is even here. Here is the question. They are asking us to represent 100% as a decimal and as a fraction. Let's see what we can do, shall we? A hundred percent, hundred percent means 100 out of 100. You divide top and bottom by 100, 100 is made of 100, 100 is made of 100, 100 percent when expressed as a fraction is simply 1 out of 1. And as a decimal is just 1. Or if you like, if it makes you feel more sophisticated, you can write it as 1.0. It's the same thing. Number five. Number five is a little bit tricky. We'll see what we can do. All right, let's take a look at it. Just give me one second. I'm trying to make up my mind here as I'm doing my work. Oh, we'll worry about it in a second. Number five. There are five more problems on this page and I was trying to decide whether I should continue this video and do the other five questions but I decided against it because even though there are five questions at the bottom of the page you will see there but that's actually a very tricky statement because five questions that are there question number one has six parts to it so to try to do all of them in one video will bore, will bore the paints off you and we don't want that do we? Let's keep our pantaloons on 0.095 that's going to be the policy in all of the videos. 0.09% Again, 0.09% simply means 0.09 divided by 100 because that's what the word, that's what the percent means. Pick up your decimal because we're dividing it by 100. Pick it up and we're going to move it two places. So let's write it here so it's easier to see. This is what it is right now. We're going to pick up our decimal and move it two places. One, two. The decimal ends up here. Let's write it in different colors so we can see it. The decimal ends up here after you move it two places. From here, one, two. Decimal moves up here, so here we have to insert a zero. And then we insert one more zero, which is called the leading zero, which does not do anything, just to, just to draw our attention to the fact that there is a decimal here. That's what it is. Now when we write it, it is simply zero point. This is something we inserted, you understand? There is a decimal here that moved here and then we have one, two, three zeros. Zero, 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 nine. That's what that is. So 0.09% when expressed as a decimal, it is 0.0009. Now let's express this thing as a fraction because that's what they're asking next. So that's that. Let's do the same thing with the fraction. It's right here. <coughs> it's right here. <coughs> Again, there is a fraction. Fraction simply means one quantity over the other, but you cannot leave decimals on the top. It has to be a whole number. So to convert 0 0.09 to make it a whole number, now we need to move the decimal to the right, one and two. And we do that by multiplying by 100. And since we're multiplying top by 100, we must multiply the bottom by 100. And 0, 0 0.09 times 100 will give us exactly 9 and on the bottom we end up with 100 times 100. 100 times 100. 100 times 100 is 10,000. So all of these quantities are equivalent. They are all equal. This, this, this thing is equal to this thing. This thing is equal to this thing. They are all equal. They are all they're all same thing being expressed three different ways, same quantity. Let's call it a day. We're going to do the next video. Let's not make the videos very long. I'm going to try to keep them so short and sweet so that you can watch this thing at your leisure here and there whenever you have a 10 minutes, 20 minutes here and there. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll do the five problems that I said 
that you see at the bottom of the page. And again, most likely I will not do all five of the problem. We'll do problem number one that you see there on the bottom of the page, which as I said, has six parts to it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.